you've got a lot on the top of your mind at the moment. And what I want to start by asking you is, are you asking yourself more questions about markets and the global economy? Or are you asking yourself more questions about what's happening in our society today? Well, and I think they're really intertwined. Uh, and if you step back, uh, I think I've been doing investing for 30 years now, over 30 years, and we are in a very uh, volatile period right now. Yes. Where there have been breakdowns, I think, in democracies, in the policies. Um, we came out of a, a period of 25 or 30 years of growth, of globalization, global trade, benefiting people all over the world, lifting them out of poverty. But there were winners and losers in that in the industrialized countries. And, and now we've seen kind of tribal movements of people who were left out of that. Um, and the political system has been in upheaval in Britain and in the US and, and, and many countries um, where, where people are looking for answers. But it has caused a lot of dislocation and um, almost a breakdown of, of kind of what we were before. So I think these social issues are very, very important. Uh, there's a bright side to that in that the younger generation, uh, the people who are hiring at Bain Capital now recognize that and they're very concerned. Uh, well, what about, are some of the specific issues that, that you're well, thinking Well, I, I say spe specifically um, kind of infighting in extreme political views rather than trying to get things done for the good of the country. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's right up there. Uh, a short-term approach of, of, of trying to get elected but not making substantive change, not working on the environment, not, not really pushing social justice forward as, as, as we should. Uh, now, the, now, the, now, the good news, the balancing factor of that is this generation, um, and I can see it in, 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 in every walk, uh, has, has bought into the fact that we need to change policies for global warming. We need to have social justice in the world, in the United States. And so I'm optimistic that we can overcome that, but this has been a very tough period. The last, I would say, four or five years have been a very tough period. And you overlay COVID, and the Ukraine war, and it's almost like a perfect storm of some, some bad dynamics that we have to get through. Bain Capital is a multi-asset investor. You look at all corners of the market, private equity and venture included, but the public market volatility of the first six months of this year, what is your assessment of that? Do you see parallels, which is cliche at this point, with the dot-com bubble, with the financial crisis? I think it's, it's different than the dot-com bubble. Uh, you know. Stock markets over history of time have con gone up and down. And uh, it seems like every generation that hasn't been burned has this irrational exuberance, especially when it comes to growth and new technologies. And so you often see an overheated period, you know, follow followed by, like you saw in dot-com, you, you, saw, you, saw, you saw a crash, but then back up over the next five to 10 years. So I see the tech side as just a correction because values were way too high, in my okay. opinion. Any models that we were running, uh, we stayed away from a lot of the companies, thank, thank goodness, uh, uh, that were losing hundreds of million dollars a year, and you had to believe in a 20-year trajectory to make profits, and finally the market and, and the environment caught up with that. Now, obviously, that was exacerbated by the things we talked about, the effect of the Ukraine war, the effect of yes. COVID on, on top of that. Uh, but I think there was a correction coming in technology for sure. You stayed away from technology. You've been looking at sports. You placed a bid for Chelsea Football Club. You were not successful. Todd Bowley, who, who was ultimately successful, has this idea that actually the English Premier League, Chelsea being an example, is undervalued. Do you agree with that assessment? I think there's a lot of growth in, uh, in major uh, football slash soccer leagues across the world. You've seen a dynamic of now global investment. And what's happened if you step back is companies like Google, Apple, um, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, Amazon, they want people to use their systems, they want eyeballs. Yeah. And in the history of time, sports has been a great investment for people who want to get eyeballs. Uh, you, the Fox television network was based on a big NFL contract. So you've seen rising revenues come in for all these sports clubs because it's the most compelling programming. And I think specifically soccer uh, slash football and basketball where I, I'm invested uh, have, have real upsides because they're global sports. Are you still looking for a, another football club, soccer club? Sure. We, uh, I, I'm a believer in, in kind of a multi-club strategy approach, and there's a lot of synergies in, in terms of bringing the best statistical t techniques in, bringing ticketing techniques in, um, understanding NFTs and Web3 and, web and how blockchain can, can help these clubs. So You think they, the clubs can leverage that? Yeah, definitely. They can definitely leverage those practices. There are people back in New York and on the East Coast that are going to 
not forgive me for this one, but commiserations, go Dubs. But you are proud of the team. Very proud of the team. Uh, it's, it's been one of the most enjoyable in the 20 years we've, we've uh, had the Celtics. This team was a together team. It, it outperformed the young team. Um, defied all the odds after, after a rough start and getting together with a new coach. And the coach did a fantastic job. The general manager, Brad Stevens, did a great job. Uh, Wick Grosbeck, my, my partner, and Rich Gotham, who run the operations. Just, I, I, I can't say enough great things about him. And, so and it's, it's been, been a great week it's been a magical, for the franchise yeah, as well. a great week for the franchise. Some incredible trades. We're bringing in Malcolm Brogdon and uh, Gallinari, one, one of my, my favorites, a fellow, fellow uh, Italian. Um, so we're really excited about next year. And we're excited about how hard the team played and how together they were. And uh, the shots aren't always going to go in. We came within you know, a, a game and a half of, uh, of basically winning it all. So we're excited about next year. You talked about a multi-club or multi-franchise approach. In Europe, you're also involved in Serie A in football. UEFA has rules on ownership around ownership of multiple clubs. Do you think that you can navigate that? You can definitely navigate it, um, especially if you, if you are looking at Division II clubs. They don't compete with the Division I clubs, so that, that, that's really easy. And then in terms of multi-club, if you had two Division I clubs, uh, the issue comes in when they meet each other. So if you have a team that is not in, in, uh, in uh, UEFA or the, or the Champions League, they won't play each other, so there's, there's not an issue there. So you can do this on a national basis, but you can definitely do it in buying clubs in the, in the second and third division and then using those, that central resource of, of statistics, management, all the latest techniques, ticketing, marketing, you know, and share that with those clubs. Private equity, an area you know well. Lots of participants in late stage rounds, end of 21, beginning of the year, holding a lot of equity. Are you worried about that? Uh, I'm, I'm not worried about it. You know, private equity has, has been reasonably disciplined, I'd say, and this is different than 2008. Uh, they've been buying good companies. We, we certainly have been disciplined at Bank Capital and did discipline and diversify the two Ds. I think that's really important in private equity. If you stay disciplined and you stay diversified, uh, then you won't be amenable to, to huge gyrations in your fund and crashes. And what I love about private equity, it is a, it is a long-term approach. So, so I don't really wake up every morning worrying that the stock market went down 100 points because we have a five-year plan and a 10-year plan and we can grow and build companies over those cycles. And, and does so, that extend to venture as well? I mean, I, I finally want to ask you, deals. Will we see deals? I mean, there is nervousness in the market right now. Yeah, there's been a pullback because, uh, again, I thought valuations were too high, especially on the venture end. Okay. Um, when I started in venture in, in 1989, a large pre-money valuation was, honestly, God, was four four million dollars uh, of a company, which is and tiny. We've seen we've seen uh, you know you know 250 pre-money valuations for right. startup companies, right. 500 million. I I could never conceive that you know back in 1989. And look, some of those have worked. Right. But with those large valuations in un, in in concepts you need to prove and build, you know you you have to hit hit one big winner to pay for for a lot of losers. The bank capital strategy has really has been more to invest in, in things at, at reasonable valuations right. that we see long-term vision for and can support for a long time.